Our senior leaders have been clear and direct in saying we're dealing with new technology and we're dealing with a new threat. We need to go fast in determining the competitive advantage of autonomy and how to ultimately operationalize autonomy for the warfighter. We are trying to figure out how to integrate artificially trained neural networks, trained in a simulation, how to integrate those into the real world. In this case, integrate them into controlling an airplane. We need to recognize that AI is here, it's here to stay, it's a powerful tool. Collaborative combat aircraft in that type of autonomy is revolutionary and will be the future battle space. In order to deliver operational capability, we need to know initially what the user wants. And so there's an element of concept refinement that needs to occur with our warfighters and with the technologists and the industry expertise that are available. One of the things that I love about our country is the amount of effort that we put into our people and the value that our people have. Working on the automatic systems, we counted every life that had been lost over the decades to mishaps, controlled flight in a terrain, collisions with other airplanes. And each one of those lives, I mean, that was a person that was loved by many people. So looking at future capabilities where the human doesn't have to be at risk, that is a huge benefit for this community. Oftentimes we'll talk about the lieutenant taking these aircraft to war. Uh, we want to make sure that they are safe, have a capability that's controllable and usable and reliable, most importantly. Adding collaborative aircraft of any kind and autonomy capabilities ultimately are going to increase the lethality and survivability of our human operators in a high-end fight. So we have basically our expert pilots, expert engineers, who are effectively the teachers for this autonomy. If you're, say, on a football team, they're the ones who are designing the drills, giving you scrimmages, and then putting you through a bunch of different repetitions of slightly different scenarios so that you can handle that situation, and then when you get to game day, you're gonna be able to handle any situation that gets thrown at you. Running these, these neural networks takes millions and millions of, of runs, of training runs. You can't do that in a real airplane. You know, a, a flight hour in F-16 is tens of thousands of dollars, but you can do it in a simulator. A key to the whole nonlinear approach, if you will, is being able to take a AI-powered system and in a model or in a, a simulated environment, iterate on that way faster than real time, like at the speed of light. In the span of 24 hours, we may have trained this thing many millions of times to do something that we've only seen once or twice in reality. Once technology matures in the sim, we bring it into flight on board actual crewed tactical platforms where the pilots can effectively go hands off. We're teaching them in the simulator and then we're putting them in the real world and then seeing how that goes. One of the advantages of test is our ability to experiment and demonstrate some of these capabilities in a controlled environment, both so that we can get important data and lessons learned out of it so we can develop our systems and risk reduce for future development, as well as making sure that we're walking down the right road. One of the things that sandboxes like the Vista aircraft can do is allow us to demonstrate some of these concepts or experiment with these concepts, show them working alongside fifth generation aircraft, and then we can develop our systems in the right direction with the test data to help the developers make the capability that we want. It's engaging the simulation first. We make sure all of the Vista systems are engaged and healthy. Then we turn on the AI agent and let it have control of the aircraft. Good control request, test point is loaded. Copy, clear to maneuver. Initially, it just flies straight and level, and then it's three, two, one, fights on. You are clear to maneuver. Copy, agent is the aircraft. Fights on. Copy, fights on. You have a set of computers inside Vista, and those computers can make the airplane fly like other airplanes. You're flying this F-16, but it feels like you're flying an F-35, or a B-52, or a 707. Plus, we have multiple data links. We can actually change the simulation while we're flying the airplane. Agent two, scenario two, zero, three. Test point setup is complete. You are clear to continue. The emphasis there is simulation and Vista are not end states, right? They do not exist in a vacuum by themselves. If they were, 
this would be a science project, right? But instead they're stepping stones to a future capability. And that future capability will reside on these future combat collaborative aircraft. Winds are nine knots at 310, we are within limits. We take the data that we generate during these tests in flight on Vista and use that to train artificial intelligence agents on board the XQ-58. So the XQ-58, it's a low cost runway independent air vehicle that is rocket launched and parachute recovered and initially controlled by a ground control station. Three, two, one, launch, launch, launch. However, we're gonna be able to switch over to artificial intelligence driven flight. And in that case, it's all up to the artificial agents to fly it from there. We're attempting to build trust in these AI agents. We're attempting to ensure that its tactics and techniques and procedures follow certain guidelines and rules of engagement and ethical considerations as well before we deploy it to be used in that combat collaborative aircraft. Clear to maneuver. Stand by for data. Think of this as the road to future capabilities, both on how we interface with these systems in our human machine interface, onboard F-22 and F-35. With our highly instrumented systems, we can pull that data out and use it to further mature and develop these systems. Two and three is proceeding shoreline five and three, two, one, mark. Two to three is rolling out. We need industry working alongside academia, working alongside DOD in order to get us to the future state, allowing us to protect our national security interests against an adversary that does not share our values. With the experimentation campaign, we're taking the autonomous research concepts that exist in a lab and we're turning them into operational realities for the warfighter. We're taking that senior leader direction and we're moving out.